Hey everyone, this week we're talking Daredevil Season 2. 2. So I finally just finished watching Daredevil Season 2. Well, not just, just finished watching, you know, like a couple days ago, but I've had some time to think about it. And yeah, I really wanted to share my thoughts with you guys. Uh, I was gonna do a different video about something else, but I thought this would be pretty cool to do, especially because we have another big superhero -y thing coming up at the end of this week that I might also be talking about. So before we get started, I'll just give you a bit of my thoughts on uh, Daredevil Season 1. I loved it. It was probably one of my favorite shows of 2015. Same with Jessica Jones. I just thought Marvel did an amazing job of showing us that superhero TV shows don't have to suck, really. I mean, we've gotten a lot, we've been really lucky and we've got a lot of great ones this year with Flash and sometimes Arrow, but Marvel is just kind of kicking ass with uh, their Netflix series. In terms of Daredevil, the action was great, the acting was awesome, the story was superb. I loved how it just kind of subtly threw in nods and hints about the connecting Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I loved uh, the Kingpin, Fisk. He, I thought he kind of stole the season for me. He was probably my favorite part of season one of Daredevil. And yeah, it was probably, like I said, one of my favorite shows of 2015. And the great thing is, a lot of those same traits carry over into season two. So let's start with the action. Probably one of the driving forces of why Daredevil is such a good show. They just did such an amazing job with the action scenes in season one. And I think to no one's surprise, it carries over beautifully into season two. We still get the amazing kind of boxer brawliness that, uh, the, of the way that Daredevil fights with that kind of little bit of elegance and training that you see that he learns uh, from Stick. But I think the really cool thing that they did this season with the action was you can see Daredevil's experience from the first season progressing to this season, where in the first season he was kind of just figuring himself out and figuring out how to take on multiple dudes and was basically just wearing a sweatshirt and a bandana. And this season you can see that he's taking, taking a lot of that experience and transferred it to knowing how to fight multiple people. He's wearing armor. He, he knows what he's getting into when he gets into the fight. And it really translates into some amazing action scenes. So just like the action, the acting in season two is just as good as season one, if not probably better. Just because all of the returning cast have really had the chance to get deeper into their characters and really take them to new places. I think the most notable would be Foggy Nelson, played by Eldon Hansen, who you can really see has taken the character a lot further than they did in season one, where in season one he was kind of that like funny friend who was the cracked jokes and was kind of the awkward nerdy guy. And this season they really took it a step further in his relationships with the other characters him trying to grow himself as a character in the season itself and it really came across really good in terms of the new cast i think the they all did an amazing job but the star for sure was john benthal who played the punisher or frank castle he just really took that character into his own uh, you guys pro might know him from playing shane in the walking dead and who, where he did an amazing job in that too. And he really just took the Punisher and you can see that he really researched the character and really came into that emotionless kind of, but really cold kind of character and really drove it home. Without spoiling anything, I would say in terms of the Punisher's story, I loved about three quarters of it. There's a little bit near the end where it falls off just like a little bit. For the most part, he is played perfectly well and portrayed perfectly well with just being a cold, stone cold, 
badass killing machine with just you can with high grade military precision and just kicks ass and John Bernthal's performance probably was the key factor in making the Punisher probably my favorite character of season two. He was cold and emotionless and dark, but as the Punisher should be, had just enough hint of emotion and caring about people without taking away from just that cold-blooded killer that the Punisher needs to be. Just like season one, Season 2 of Daredevil's writing and story is just top-notch. Uh, it held me from pretty much beginning to end with only a couple minor points near the end of the season where it started to feel a little bit of a lull, but really not enough to be a major complaint. I really enjoyed how there seemed to be a lot more branching, little mini branching off plots as opposed to last season there was a generally a one bigger story. The other character they introduced in season two who was a major part of the plot was Elektra, who I think they did an amazing job of, and I really enjoyed her kind of playfully banter kind of relationship with Daredevil. Uh, she introduced a lot of new plots, a lot of new things that some of which are resolved in this season and some of which allude to uh, some pretty cool, pretty crazy things that could either come in a, another season of Daredevil or could come into the crossover series Defenders. The last thing I'll touch on is how Daredevil fits into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And compared to season one, they were a little bit softer on the references and links to other movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But they instead, they seem to focus a lot more on uh, the Netflix kind of series they have going on with quite a few references to the Jessica Jones series that aired a couple, not a couple, a few months ago. And I'm just, I'm not quite sure if that was something I liked or something I didn't like. I don't know how to explain that. I mean, I really enjoyed in season one seeing or hearing all the references to the first Avengers movie and the Battle of New York, and then kind of hearing the drops of, the kind of name drops of Iron Man and Thor. I did kind of miss them in this season. Not that I really wanted them to hammer home, like, by the way guys, there's these movies, but just, you know, a kind of acknowledgement that there is some craziness going on in the world with Age of Ultron and some of the other, some of the other Marvel movies that came out. Um, and I hope, especially after Civil War, that we really get to see the effect of that movie in these Netflix series. Obviously, there's so much to talk about in this season, but I'm sure if I kept rambling, I would verge on spoiling something, and I don't want you guys, I don't want to do that. I want you guys to go out and watch the show. Uh, if you've already watched the show, what did you think? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What are the things you'd like to see possibly in Daredevil Season 3 or even in the upcoming Defenders series? Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys like this video, don't be afraid to go complete Punisher on that like button. And until next week, guys, see ya. I finally just watched. <clears throat> the acting was great. I don't know why I said that with a slight hesitance. So let's start with the action. Um, season one, sorry, one more time, I said numb, uh, was Foggy Nelson, uh, played by, what was it? Eldon, Eldon Hansen. Um, let's try that one more time because I don't want to have to look down there.